Hello there guys, I'm Unstable Voltage and welcome to my Europa Universalis 4 Mare Nostrum tutorial. In this video I'm going to be covering how to core using the new states and territory system. If you're completely new to EU4, I'd highly recommend that you go and check out my Common Sense tutorial series. Those are longer videos, but they will teach you the fundamental basics of how to play the game to a competent level. And if you want to watch that series, the link is in the description below this video. And you should also be able to click on the card that should be in the top right hand corner of the screen now. So with that out of the way, I'm going to assume that anybody watching this video at least understands what cores are in EU4. Now, this is one of the biggest changes, in my opinion, in the Mare Nostrum expansion, because first of all, it changes a game mechanic that's been around pretty much since the start of the game, and secondly, it's actually part of the free patch, patch 1... 0.16. So regardless of whether or not you actually buy Mare Nostrum, if you keep your game up to date, this change will affect you. So first of all, the way cores always used to work was if you took a piece of land from somebody, you had to core it. And there were certain things that would determine how many admin points it cost to core that land. It was mainly based, uh, based on the land's development value. The more development a land had, or before development it was uh, off of base tax but the more development a land has the more admin points it costs to core now there are some things that can affect those positively and negatively if you have a claim on a piece of land uh, let's go do we have claims on these ones I know uh, we're playing this Castile here Castile does sometimes start with claims on certain lands but I couldn't remember which ones no apparently they don't uh, if you have a claim on a province it reduces the amount of admin it costs to core and if you were to take something like if we look in Morocco here and we look, look over the coring button at, at the bottom it says they have Berber traditions which increases the admin cost for coring so there have always been basic things that actually uh, increase or decrease the coring cost of a province. But one of the big issues that you used to have was provinces that were classed as distant overseas. And this was always a problem, especially for nations in Iberia like Castile, Portugal, Aragon and Granada if you played them. Especially if you were taking land in Africa. Now I'm going to be using a couple of console commands during this video because it just makes life a little bit quicker. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off the fog of war. And I'm just, um, actually no, we can leave the fog of war on, but I'm going to turn off terra incognita and now we can see all of the land so what i'm going to do now is if we go and have a look at the geographical map modes and you should see that the there we go the sixth one down is overseas provinces if we give that a click and you can see with castile selected anything here that is green which is everything in the Europe area, is not classed as distant overseas. None of this is classed as overseas. And we can also see that some of the north coast of Africa, so all of Clemson, Morocco, and a little bit of Tunis, this is not overseas either. But then the rest of Morocco and the rest of Africa is all distant overseas, even though... If you actually look at, a, say, this province here, Abda, Abda is closer to our capital than, you know, these provinces over here. Now, the disadvantage of having provinces that are classed as distant overseas is that they always have a twenty, uh, sorry, a seventy-five percent uh, local autonomy floor. So you're only ever going to get twenty-five percent of the value out of one of those provinces, and this is what the states and territory system tries to get around. So let's go and have a look at that. So one thing you might notice in the geographical map modes is there's now a new button called States and Territories. If we go and click on that, you can see that the parts of the map here have turned green. So the reason for that is anything that is a state is dark green. Anything that is light green is a our capital state. So it's the state where your capital is. And that is you always have to have a state where your capital is it can't be in a territory uh, the stripe lines means that we own provinces in this state but we don't own the entire state so this is the state of upper andalusia but we don't own this state granada does but we do own Jain, which is part of upper andalusia now if we just go here and click on the stability and expansion tab you'll see you've now got this new little box here and this says um, we have, there's a number that says 15. That is how many states we're allowed to have. There's no limit to the number of territories you can have, but there is a limit to the number of states. Now, it's telling you where that 15 limit comes from. We get a, a limit of 5 for being a feudal monarchy. 
we get a base value of five anyway. So everyone starts with five and then an extra five for being a feudal monarchy and then an extra five for our government rank, which should be a kingdom. Yeah, we're a kingdom. So you get more if you become an empire, slightly less if you are a duchy. Now, there are ways to improve that. And I think it says here, the maximum number of states can be increased by increasing government rank, advancing administrative technology, and completing administrative idea groups. So if you go and look in technology, first of all, you can see down here on the admin tech that you get more states or allowance of more states when you hit admin tech level 8, 12, 17, 20, 24, 27, and 31. And if you go and look at the idea groups... And some of the admin ideas, I can't remember where they all are now, but there are some idea groups in here that do allow you to have um, more states. But you should be able to keep up with the growth. Now, going back and looking at that stability and expansion tab, why does it say we have seven states? Well, the reason for that is, and if it, you mouse over it, it'll tell you, we actually have Toledo, Leon, Castile, Lower Andalusia, Astoros, Upper Andalusia, and uh, Maca... I never get this one right. Macaronesia. Now, if we actually go and click on the areas map mode, and that splits down all of the um, regions into their areas, each area is actually a state. So if you look at this list again, Toledo, Leon, and Castile, well, this green area here is Toledo. This is our capital province, um, our, our capital state. This white state here is Leon. Um, Castile is this sort of salmon-colored state over here. Then we have Lower Andalusia, Astorus. Um, this is Lower Andalusia, these uh, pink provinces here. Uh, Astorus is this province, uh, this state along the top here, the sort of almost purpley coloured one, the puce one. Uh, and then we have Upper Andalusia, which we've already spoken about, which is this one province that we own here, but the rest of Upper Andalusia is down here in Granada. And then finally, the Macaronesia is actually the Canary Islands down here. This is the, st the state of Macaronesia. So these are all the states that you can have. Now, you'll also notice if we mouse over them, it actually says that we... It tells you the development cost for each of those provinces. And there's also a monthly maintenance cost, that, which is on the ones we have ranging between 0.35 ducats a month and 0.06 ducats a month. Toledo doesn't have any cost, it's our capital state. Your capital state doesn't cost you any maintenance at all. So everything you have that is a state, you have to pay a maintenance cost for. But all of your provinces that are in states will have a floor of 0% autonomy. The reason some of these are showing 25 is because they belong to estates. Estates being the um, mechanic that was added in the Cossacks, such as the nobility, the burghers, and the... Um, can't remember the name now. It's just gone from my head. It's the religious one, the clergy. Right. So... Let's go and do a few things here. First of all, if we click on any province, you'll now notice that there are these two new buttons here and a little symbol. This symbol tells you whether something is a state or a territory. Now, you've got two buttons here. One of them is to abandon a state and turn it back to a territory. And one of them is to call core all the provinces in that state or in that territory. Now, we can't click any of these buttons. First of all, it's already a state and everything's fully cored. And secondly, it's, it's not possible to abandon a state if it contains provinces that belong to an estate. So we're going to use the console here and do a couple of little things. First of all, let's say, for example, that we went to war and took all of Morocco. Okay. Now, as I've already showed you in the geographical map road, some of um, Morocco is not distant overseas, but some of it down here is distant overseas. So that's what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to just bring up the console and I'm going to use, I'm going to actually give myself some admin points first because we'll need those later. And I'm going to use the console command Annex Morocco. And what that will do is that will give all of Morocco to us, but with no cause. That's like we've just taken all the land. We haven't called anything. If we go and look on these now, you'll see that none of them actually have cause. Now, if I go to these ones, now some of them we might not actually be able to reach because they might be too far away. No, we can all get them. So, as you can see, we have the option to make these into cores. And if you look at the bottom, it says, The following multipli multi uh, multiplicative modifier is territory, minus 50%. So, because these are territories, and we can check that by going to the states and territories map mode, you can see that this is actually now yellow. 
and it's yellow because it is a territory, not a state. Because it's a territory, it only costs us 50% to get a core here. And we can go ahead and we can core all of these provinces individually, like so. Or we can actually go around and just click on the core all provinces in Marrakesh and core all provinces in Fez. And what you'll notice here is that we do have, again, North Morocco, we've got multiple territories. Now, if we go back and look at our stability and expansion, we had zero territories before. We've now got five territories. And it actually tells you how much it would cost you as a state per month. So the reason that we've got multiple territories here, again, if we just go back to the uh, areas map mode, is you can actually see that Morocco is split up into Tafilalt, um, Sousse, Marrakesh, Fez, and Maghreb. So you've got multiple different um, areas here. So let's just go back to the normal map mode. It'll take a long time for those cores to complete. So I'm going to do another little cheat and I'm going to grab Tunis. And the reason I'm going to grab Tunis is because I want to show off something very specific. I can't grab Clemson because Clemson isn't distant overseas. Um, but with Tunis, two of their provinces aren't distant overseas. These two here, um, Matidja and Kabylia, and then the rest of them are distant overseas. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a slightly different console command this time. And this time I'm going to use integrate, um, if I can spell it right. Uh, because what integrate will do is that will give me the land, but it will also automatically be cored. Now I'm just going to press a button and then unpress a button because it gives me full cores on everything and I don't want full cores on everything. So what we have here now is we have even more territories. Everything here is a territory. Now we should automatically have, it's not doing it the way I want it to do. Let's do it there. Okay, fine. This is what I wanted. So, what we've actually got now, and we're going to look at two different um, two different territories here. And we can see that more easily if we just go back into the areas map mode. So, we've got this province here, which is in... Actually, um, yeah, we've got this province here, which is in Algiers, and we've got this province here, which is in Kabylia. So this one isn't distant overseas, this one isn't distant overseas, and the rest of them are. So what we have now, imagine that we've taken this, this is a territory, and we have cored it. Now you'll notice the core has a slightly different coloured border. It's very hard to see on YouTube because of the artefacting, but the border is actually more of a sort of a bronze or a copper colour as compared to the gold colour around a normal core. And if you actually mouse over it, it actually says that it is a territorial core. Now, the territorial core, as I pointed out when we started doing some coring over here in uh, Morocco, the territorial cores only cost 50% um, of the actual normal coring cost. Now, if you actually look here, even though this province is not distant overseas, it still has an autonomy floor of 75%. We can't go any lower. And it actually says, if we mouse over... Territories cannot have autonomy lower than 75%. And even if we go over to this territory here, this province is not distant overseas, 75% floor. This province is distant overseas, 75% floor. But what we can do now is we can take this territory here and we can click this button to make it into a state. So if we click this button now and it comes up and it will tell us it will cost us 0.27 ducats in maintenance every month, but it will increase our income by about 0.19. Now that's not really um, beneficial for us because we'd be losing more money than we gain, but we would also in uh, get a gain in manpower and sailors because we'd be getting the full manpower from the provinces in this uh, region as opposed to just getting 25% of them. Now you will find that there are some provinces that will actually give you more back than you put in. So let's go ahead and turn this territory into a state and we can instantly see that if we click on the states and territories map mode now because this one has gone green. So this is now a state. Once again if we have a look in the stability and expansion we now have eight states and we can see that Kabylia is now on the list. It is at the bottom of the list there. So what does that do well now that we've turned this territory into a state the first thing you'll notice is that the autonomy floor has now gone down to 50 percent so no longer is it a 75 percent autonomy floor it's now a 50 percent autonomy floor but they still only have 
territorial cores, these half price cores. But what we can do now is we can actually go to these cores and we can make it into a full core. Now the great thing about doing this is it still only costs half of the amount of a full core. So we've, we've already paid half with the territorial core. We're now going to pay the other half and get a full core. But if we do this, it's instant. You don't have to wait. This is now a full core. This is a territorial core. And you can actually see the difference in the core icons here. So this is a territorial core. It's sort of darkened out with a slightly bronzed border. And this is a state core. It's highlighted with a gold border. And once again, we can just go and use the core all provinces button in that one particular state. And you'll now see that all of these uh, regions have an autonomy floor of zero. Some of them do have some autonomy, but that's because they've got things affecting them. Uh, there are various other modifiers that do affect the autonomy in provinces such especially things like the uh, new corruption mechanic and things like that so there's always going to be a little bit of um autonomy but the autonomy floor is now zero so what this basically means for you is that you can actually decide which land that you want to become a state so states are more expensive because they cost you maintenance every month but you can actually get um, zero percent autonomy even in distant overseas lands and that's fantastic because if you're playing as somebody like portugal or castile and you decide that you want to go and you know take out mali for some reason and you grab a load of land down here normally if you grabbed all of this it would be distant overseas and it would all have 75 percent autonomy and you could decide if you wanted to to make all of these into states and fully call them and they would have zero percent autonomy so that is the idea behind the states and territory system now it is possible to go and turn a state back into a territory i think what i'll do here as well is i'll just um tag switch to England so we're playing as England now and uh, again if we just have a quick look at England we'll see that they have 10 states because England's actually uh, split up into quite a lot of different areas if we just have a look at that and again you've got this is the East Anglia um, East Anglia area so this is the capital state now most of these states we can't actually take back because they do belong to estates but the state of Mercia actually doesn't have any territories in there, that um, any provinces that belong to a state. So what we can do is we can click on one of the provinces in this state and we can press the button to make it back into a territory. We get a confirmation dialogue. By no longer considering Mercia a state, we will no longer be forced to pay the 0.39 ducats in maintenance every month. But the local autonomy level in the provinces will be increased to a much higher level. So as you can see in Derbyshire, the local autonomy is 0%. If we go and turn this into a territory, the autonomy floor is now back up to 75%. Even though this is only two provinces away from our capital and it has a direct land connection, it's got 75% autonomy because it is just classed as a territory. You'll also see that the core has now changed back to the bronze border, so it is now a territorial core. And if we were to change it back into a state, which we can do, and it would tell us that turning it into a state will cost us 0.39 in maintenance every month, but it will increase our income by about 0.77. So this is a good example of converting a territory into a state and actually making a profit from it, not to mention, of course, the increase in manpower. So if we go ahead and do that, you'll notice that we still only have these territorial cores. And if we want to turn these territorial cores into state cores, we've got to go ahead and call them again, and that is going to cost us. We've got no admin points here, so we'll just give ourselves some. So if we look now, we can see to call all of the provinces in Mercia, doesn't actually tell us the amount, but we're capped at 999, so we'll go ahead and hit that. There we go. 275 points to core five provinces. So if you ever convert a state into a territory, you lose all of the state cores and they get downgraded to territorial cores. If you then convert it back to a state, you're going to have to pay those admin points again to go back to state cores. Now, it is instant but you will be paying admin points. At the end of the day, you're never really paying any more admin points than you were before because a territorial core is half price and a state core is half price. Add them together and it's full price. So you're still paying what you would have done for a normal core back before version 1.16. So in summary, you're limited to the number of states you can have, but you're not limited to the number of territories that you can have. 
Territories have a 75% autonomy floor. States have a 50% autonomy floor if they only have territorial cores in them. If they have state cores, they have a 0% autonomy floor, but you do pay maintenance for the states. But Overall, it's going to be really, really good for people who want to expand a lot because you can pick and choose which land is the most valuable to you and which land is the most beneficial to you and make that into states. And any land that you've got that you consider to be a little bit worthless and maybe just a stepping stone to reach somebody else, you can leave it as a territory. So thanks a lot for watching guys, I hope that this video tutorial has been useful for you. In the next video I will be covering the new espionage system and how to make claims and we'll also touch on to the new corruption system that has been added. So thanks a lot for watching guys, I'll see you on the next video and until then, goodbye for now.